Welcome to Nintendo Voice Chat for the week of April 28th, 2016. I am your host, Jose Otero, and this is a special nightmare edition what? of Nintendo Voice Chat, where all of your E3 bad dreams can come true. <laughs> Joining me this week is Per Schneider. Hey. And Brian Altano. Hi. And really quickly, if you want to support Nintendo Voice Chat, you know what you could do if you like watching videos? You can head on over to YouTube, where we have, if you go to youtube.com slash Nintendo Voice Chat, one word, mm -hmm. you can watch the video of the show there. So if you're into that, if you're having trouble finding it on the main feed, if you're upset because it was difficult to find and you're a big consumer of YouTube, you now have a place where we want to grow a community and we want you to be a part of it. So yeah. make sure you head on over there and check that out. Or Thank do you. What I, do what I do. Open up a bunch of tabs, open up YouTube, put a show like this on in the background and just let it run. You don't even have to watch this all the time when you see us flipping out you can look over because it's usually jose he's pulling his hair out and me yeah that's right there we jose go. looks like those blow up people at jose the punches car dealerships me. like he punches ah. me two or three times an episode and that's the only way to see it not yeah. on camera <laughs> but uh what, what we do want to say is if you also want to support the show you can leave us a review for example do, uh demonic reaper <laughs> hacker alias left us a review on april 7th that said i enjoy mvc mainly because of the commentary the music themes aesthetic and guests he's listening to the audio version which does have musical stuff that you're not getting on the video sorry kids i listened to hear updates Special. on the nintendo world that i left behind over a decade ago i hope nintendo steers the ship in a better direction with nx but until then i can hear the goings on on nbc he also wants more earthbound so nice. if you want to support us you can do that now buckle up because it is going to be quite an episode for you today full of drama and tears <laughs> and arguments yeah, aren't we and like in we're the setting the stage aren't we at, in the third phase like we passed denial already now we're in the acceptance yeah kind of we've been phase. grieving on this show because <laughs> um nintendo has made a bunch of announcements as part of their financial results which happened you know their fiscal year reporting happened this week and we have a bunch of news to talk about, including how NX will launch in March 2017, how that system will not be at E3, how Zelda has been delayed until 2017, and it is coming to both NX and Wii U. The next two mobile games have been identified. Nintendo's overall profit is down. And we've got a few other topics of discussion as well. But let's kick it off with the... And next stuff. <laughs> so I, I thought you were going to do like Michael Buffer or something. Yeah. <laughs> Let's get ready to rumble. <laughs> there you go. Uh, so here we go. NX coming out March 2017th will not be at E3 according to Nintendo so, President Tatsumi Kimishima. March 2017. March 2017. Okay. So, uh, which let's get some let's get some quotes in because if you've seen a Facebook video that we did we had our general quick thoughts there but I want to add a couple things to it first of all the Nikkei Japanese newspaper asked Nintendo more specifically Kimishima what is NX <laughs> at this current stage he was unable to say however NX is not the mere successor to the handheld 3DS or the stationary console Wii U this will be hardware that's been made with a new way of thinking I'd like to announce more particulars regarding its specs and how it works another time this year big hint there though come on like it is not the successor to the 3ds or the wii u because it's both how about both or none <laughs> well look i mean yeah. you're speaking all, in tongues let's what are you let's saying? go let's go back for, first of all the announcements are there's positive and negative positive we finally have a date the negative it's not this year. It's not this year. The well, negative, they're not showing it this not year. Not going to be shown yeah, at E3. That's sad. The positive, we have a date. Wait, I already said that. No, but um, <laughs> the the other thing is like, what we know from Nintendo in the past is a date doesn't mean much. March 2017 could still mean Christmas 2017. Yeah. Sure. It could, be, it could mean summer, right? L lots of things can It's a move good around. point to make. When Nintendo announces dates, sometimes those dates slip. They yeah. believe that's going to be the date. Like. 2015, Zelda was supposed to come out. It did not. 2016, Zelda was supposed to come out. It has not. And the same with hardware. Like, certain launches then got pushed back, like a territory uh, like Europe or Japan got pushed back and got the launch later. So it's it's really, it's really one of those things where it's like, yes, it's disappointing, moved out of the year. It's good that we at least have a goalpost. Mm. And then that, that comment that it's not a successor to either one of them, that to me is just a confirmation that it is a that it is a bridge device like this kind of hub of entertainment that can be played anywhere. But what I mean, I I'm just I I'm totally confused by saying it's not a successor because it's a thing that comes <laughs> after a thing before it. But but that's he, a successor. But he doesn't play video games. Yeah, it's, if it plays video games and it comes after the thing that came before it, that's literally a okay, successor. Okay, but maybe it also means it is not Wii U too. Meaning like it's a not a successor powerful, by name. A, a more powerful Wii yeah. with a gamepad. It's not that. It's no. something new. And I think they the that may also 
it, even if it's just a home console, it may indicate a change in brand. We are not going to get another Wii. It's not going to be Wii 3 yeah. or Wii, Wii, Wii. Or but we whatever. do want to emphasize that not Wii having Wii. the system at E3, not presenting any NX-related information at E3 is disappointing. Very. Yeah. Because everyone was looking forward to E3 as being the first signs or one of several signs of what the system will be. Now, to me, this says NX is clearly not ready to show. It's disappointing it won't be there because we're already hearing Microsoft will have something or it, it seems to indicate based on their quotations. That's not like you'll, something we've heard. You'll have your Sony saying Neo, something. You'll have yeah, everything. Sony's bringing yeah. something. Mm -hmm. And here you have VR. Nintendo who rather than compete with that noise is opting out either because the system's not ready to show or because they don't want to compete with those two uh, pieces of machinery. It it's, remains to be seen, but regardless, it's not happening at E3. There's a third option, and that's to, m to amplify the message that the Wii U is dead. They, you know, when you show new hardware, you're saying, that's it, everybody get really excited for this next thing. Because even if they didn't want to show what the NX is, they could have gone on stage and they could say, we're not going to show you what the MacGuffin is, what the special sure. thing is, but Here's the what console the is like. called the Nintendo something something, and it is going to launch with Metroid and an, a special edition of the Zelda game. They could have very well done that at E3 or, instead of saying, you know, delaying Zelda now and all of that. Or True. even putting up that logo wall of like, here's mm -hmm. the third parties we're partnering with, which they've done before, which every company has done before at E3. E3 is a good time to do that. I mean, it's just... Mm -hmm. They could have done something so like I don't, that. I don't disagree with either one of you, but I do feel like the Nintendo of now w seems to lean into more substance whenever they do announce something. It's, it's the reason that we'll wake up in the middle of the night in August and all of a sudden find out there's a new Nintendo 3DS, and here's a video yep. that walks you through how the hardware works. Uh -huh. Here's mm -hmm. a video that shows you the differences between it and its, it and its uh, predecessor. Um, but uh, so... I mean, so it, it's tough, right? Yeah, it's just yeah, like, yeah. Uh, to me, it says there just wasn't enough to put on stage or to say much with. And I think the wall of logos would be cool, but there is so much cynicism around how yeah. tight are your third party relationships it, right now because you told me right. on Wii U, you had them. And guess what happened after year one? Jose, not much. If there's any time and place in the world to pull up a logo that has almost nothing behind it, E3 is. <laughs> spot. That's the place. <laughs> Place to be, and it'll get that was half of Sony's applause. conference last year. You could <laughs> yeah. show Shenmue. Like, Remember that? Here yeah. it is. That's a picture of the logo. Got a screenshot. Yeah. Nope. Final <laughs> Fantasy. You guys like like that one? Final Fantasy VII. Here's another screen. Here's another logo. Backwards. Whatever it is. Goes that, a trailer. Trailer. It was a trailer. It was a trailer. Yeah, yeah it was a CG trailer. No, but but yeah. but I so I I hear you on that. Like yeah. on the one hand, it would be nice to get more of a life. And, and just for it to become more real and not like it like the rest of 2016 is going to look like Nintendo gave up right? yes exactly you've got 3DS games Pokemon is a strong game right like let's not forget that that will sell real hello IGN and specifically Facebook my name is Jose Otero I'm here with Pierre Schneider hey. Ryan Altano. Pizza. Pizza. And this is a very special live edition of Nintendo Voice Chat, which is a podcast that you can find on IGN, on iTunes, on Google Play, on wherever you go. And specifically, we were called together today to talk about Nintendo's big announcements, which came out of their investors' results last night. So there's a lot to talk about. If you're watching on Facebook, please, by all means, add comments and questions. We're going to get to you. But first, let's talk about what was said. Specifically, let's lead <laughs> off with that. <laughs> Nintendo's next platform, Codename NX, which yeah. the company had to announce when they talked about their smartphone plans, uh, what, about a year ago, has now, now has a date. March 2017, Nintendo is saying they're going to launch the system globally. Now, that doesn't mean all on one day to me. That means in March, right. it's going to spread between different territories, which means I hope their production's figured out. But that's a big deal. However, this platform will not be at E3, will not be shown in any capacity at this year's E3. So we don't even get like a controller or the power cable or no, nothing. No. Nothing at all. From what they're saying right now, and they, they did do this with Zelda in the past, right? Where right. they said, hey, we're not going to show this, and they stuck to it. And I, I believe it. Uh, it's a it's a very shrewd move. First of all, the NX wasn't wasn't announced for this year as as a new console coming out. Yeah. But we had assumed it because the Wii U slate looked pretty empty, with the ex exception of Zelda. Now with Zelda out of the picture, and that's the other story, right? Zelda not coming out this year. You're looking at the holiday season. And you're like, wait a second. So if NX comes out in March and the Wii U's lost hurrah is uh, this Christmas, 
what, what's in that hurrah? Like, right. what, you know, like what, what games are we going to get? And tie that in with the announcement that E3 will focus entirely on Zelda. I'm, I'm a little, I'm it's a little a, surprised. Yeah, it's like, a worrisome move for a company that has said over and over that they didn't want to burn the Wii U consumer. Mm -hmm. But the Wii U consumer right now can't help but feel a little burned because they don't know what they're going to be playing past June outside of uh, Paper Mario Color Splash, right. which didn't get the best reception. But to focus more on NX. I guess my bigger question, Brian, uh, just weigh in on first that announcement, and then I want to ask you guys, like, what is, what do you think this means for that console? Like, will it, will it, su will it succeed or fail because it's not an E3? So, I mean, uh, we, we've talked about this before, but one of the biggest uh, uh, hurdles that the NX faces is obviously getting games, getting third-party support. This, I think, hopefully opens them up to get on the phone more and get more games on that thing. I was incredibly worried thinking it would launch this fall, and that they hadn't really called enough third parties, or they, they their sort of resources are spread thin between the 3DS, the Wii U. Uh, mobile now, which is another platform they're tar starting to very much take seriously. Uh, in another way, it's very interesting because you've never really seen Nintendo launch a console in the spring like this. You know, holidays is when you launch consoles, historically. But this fall, specifically, uh, the NX would have been going up against like seven different VR units. Mm -hmm. It would have been going up against possibly <laughs> the PlayStation 4.5 or the Xbox One 2. Who knows if any of those things are going to happen. I mean, there's rumors swirling about all those guys coming out with their own consoles. Putting those head to head against VR, or some t in some ways with VR, and Nintendo kind of sitting off to the side, being like, "Well, we also have this thing." Uh, it's interesting. So I think yeah. it clears it clears the, the the space for them to come out and own a lot of retail space next uh, next spring to own the conversations about getting new video game consoles. Yeah, yeah. So well, and it opens a door for when that message gets delivered. It's standalone, right. right? And it's going to attract eyeballs. I mean, the fact that we're all going absolutely bonkers over what got said in an investor's report mm -hmm. is already signs to me that that message is going to get out there. The question is, is it going to reach enough people? To me, though, it is clear that NX is not ready to show, and I actually applaud the idea of not having it at E3 and risk showing something really? that isn't ready. Yes, so I, I do. do. I, okay. Yeah. I, I, I agree. You have only one time to make a, make, a, make a good impression, and, you know, Sony has shown how powerful E3 can they be, have. right? Like, yeah. Sony's PlayStation 4 succeeded based on the positive messaging that they started at E3 and how they leveraged... Xbox messages and a little smack them, talk, right? yeah. Yeah, you and know. so w what's going to happen though? Like, if if all we're getting is like this this kind of muted announcement in the fall out of Japan through another investors call, that's not going to get developers excited. But, and so <coughs> there needs right. to be another sure, big coming out. Sure, I mean, maybe sure, that is Gamescom or another event, but like you're not hitting GDC, you're not hitting E3, and so the whole story that they're getting in front of developers, well. The best way to get in front of developers, get them excited, is to show the freaking thing. Yeah, yeah but I wouldn't. I mean, they're clearly breaking tradition and not showing hardware at E3, which is typically the place that you show new hardware and then you show it, basically sell it right. in the year or sure. two year span. However, I don't think from a tech perspective or from an audience perspective, it will limit them, limit them if they are saying the right things and they pick the right way to present it. I think when it's standalone, it does not compete with Microsoft and with PlayStation and with that branding so, that they yeah. basically get the attention they deserve. And that's what, they, that's what they're trying to do. The, I, Nintendo's also been moving around the definition of what E3 even means to them for, what, four years now, three years now? Yeah. I mean, it, instead, of, instead of doing that live show in the Nokia theater with a, a packed crowd screaming and yelling or sometimes just having a sort of muted golf clap if mm -hmm. they didn't have the best showing uh, they changed their focus and I think it's sort of fascinating because they last year their E3 was basically a bunch of singles and doubles right mm -hmm. it's a bunch of like kind of small little hits here and there and this time they're focusing on one big grand slam now I don't know if that's gonna be enough to keep them sort of in in the mouthpieces of, of everybody during uh, the basically video game Christmas uh, because we're gonna be talking about so many different games but if you're at E3 and you're not a big Zelda guy, which I don't know what's wrong with you. Uh, <laughs> this is all you're really getting. So love it or not, this is the big news from this. And well, I'm a little surprised we're not even getting a tease, like maybe a 30 second teaser trailer of what a controller might look like. I mean, well, it's, I, I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't overlook the fact though that Nintendo can announce games that won't be playable on the show floor. For sure. And yes. I think that there'll be smaller titles, if anything, in last E3 is any indicator. Okay. They are not afraid to show you what they have. I mean, last year they clearly showed what they have, and they did not show Zelda. And it hurt them in the end. They, they tried to promote Wii U, and it ended up not paying dividends. And I feel the year before, they tried even harder. Okay, yeah. but, but a console announcement is different. And I feel like the Wii...